Hello and welcome. Today I have with me Nico Granady Garmati, professional Trackmania player. Hello, how are you doing? Hello, hello. Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, thanks for the invitation. And I am doing uh, really good. Nice to, uh, nice to be here. Um, it's great that you're feeling uh, good right now. I assume it was pretty bitter uh, right uh, after the quarterfinals ended, uh, after being disqualified. What can you tell me about uh, this match? Uh, with what mindset did you go into it? How did that change throughout the match? Um, overall, what, how did it look from your perspective? Um, like from my mindset, uh, surprisingly, actually, I was uh, very, very relaxed throughout the whole match. Like usually, uh, for example, how it was with Team GL, I was always kind of nervous and kind of under pressure. But when I went into the Setter T uh, match, it was like... I was completely relaxed and I just basically uh, drove my normal pace and I also don't know why it was so different that time for me, but uh, yeah, I, I just had a really relaxed mindset. I didn't feel pressured at all. So uh, it also made me perform better, I think. So that was actually a pretty good thing that I hopefully can keep for other tournaments. And yeah, I mean, uh, the match was of course tough, <laughs> but um, yeah, like from my mindset wise, it was actually uh, pretty good, and I was also quite surprised about that. Like I didn't, because usually, as I said, uh, I'm usually rather nervous before matches because you always want to perform and you always think like, uh, oh, if I don't do good, uh, all the practice time is wasted and so on. And it's of course, it also was a very important match because uh, going to the arena, it would have been the first time ever for me. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I was doing pretty good actually. So I was happy with my performance there. <laughs> uh, that's great. Uh, did didn't you feel like? Massively disappointed after it ended. It was wasn't it just or was it just relaxed and good and all fun? I mean, um, like already when we when I started, uh, when I decided to play with Lars, we already said to each other, we're not gonna completely no life into the tournament. We mm -hmm. are gonna try our best. We are gonna try relatively hard, but it's not like we're gonna try. We're gonna practice twenty four seven. So uh, of course, our initial goal was to get into the semifinals because. That's kind of the goal of every like good duo uh, that is playing a set of T because it's like the only real thing that matters in the tournament, I would say. But um, it's not really like I uh, expected us because I knew the quarterfinal is going to be really hard, especially against Gwen Affi, obviously. Uh, we also played against Yannick's Asside, who practiced a lot. So my expectations also were rather low. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was, of course, disappointed because uh, we were really close to making it. But yeah, what can you do? <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't too bad afterwards. I was a bit disappointed for like a few hours, but afterwards I thought like, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, you touched on something that I was uh, curious about. Um, that you guys weren't really... You said that you were, aren't were, are going to no life into this tournament. Uh, no excessive training and stuff like that. And from watching POVs, I also got this feeling that uh, non-French play, non French players uh, treat CRT a little bit more... A little bit, uh, I would say, like... For fun tournament less seriously than the French ones. I couldn't get the French POV, so uh, it mm -hmm. comes from just watching Spam Pack, uh, Massa Mime, and of course you. Uh, but uh, what do you think about it? Do French players uh, take it more seriously than the rest of the world, or what was what is your approach? Does yeah, it... definitely, definitely. I, like I feel like uh, I don't know how it is because I'm not in contact with too many French players, but mm -hmm. I feel like the Saturday Tea Cup for the French people is like the the most by far, but like by miles, the most important thing in Trackmania for them. And it's like that one time of the year where they're just gonna grind the game till the maximum to like get there. Uh, I don't know. It's probably because I mean uh, the uh, the tournament is of course very French based. Like you only have French casts. Um, the organization by now is also uh, like you, like I, I remember a few years ago. I think all the announcements and so on only were French and stuff. And of course, also the whole show is based in France, and it's of course focused towards uh, French players. Like by now, uh, Lucky Lisa Raider and also John and the admins and so on, they enabled the tournament for uh, people outside of Fran uh, France as well, which is pretty good. But of course, it's still mainly focused on uh, the French community. So um, it's kind of, it, it really makes sense that the French people or the French speaking ones, also people like Carl and so on, or the ones from Switzerland, that they uh, take it more serious. And yeah, I mean, most of the non-French people, they're just, I don't know, they just take it as a fun tournament, as you said. So, but to me, it's not really surprising. It, it makes sense if you ask me. All right. But uh, coming back to the final results uh, for a little bit. 
how does that affect your mental? Because you've had a streak now of probably, well, not so satisfying outcomes. First, you couldn't yeah. get the TMGL <laughs> finals with final chance. Mm. Then Gwen took the last spot for World Cup. And unfortunately, you got disqualified from ZRT. Is it demotivating you? Like before, right before the World Cup qualifications and the World Cup itself, then the Malloy. What's happening in your mind? Yeah, it's of course uh, not the greatest thing to have as a player, like when you really try your best and it's just barely not working out. I think the, the thing that hurt the most probably is the one we won against Gwen, because mm -hmm. uh, there, like, if you remember, we were both finalists on the very last map in the very last round and then yeah. it was not enough by like one single point. And especially now, uh, like by that point, I already knew that the uh, World Cup is going to take place offline again in France. It was already known to a few players. So, uh, like, it wasn't known to viewership, but I had a lot more pressure then because it was, of course, it would have been my very first LAN, and I, of course, want to be at a LAN at some point, so the pressure was quite high there. So it was a bit disappointing. Also, uh, the, the, the final chance, but that one didn't hurt too much, to be honest, because uh, I also just played really better. I would not have deserved it. And now the Setter T, uh, yeah, it, it's, I'm on a bad streak, but uh, hopefully I can end it soon with the open qualifier. That is, of course, the goal. And yeah, like, especially now after, like, in the Setter T match and also in the 1v1 against Gwen, I uh, personally, I think I played really good overall. A uh, few mistakes, but pretty good performance. So I hope uh, I can carry it on through the open qualifier. And then finally, uh, also make my goal. <laughs> it would be good mm -hmm. for once. Uh, does the pressure get to you? Like, uh like in some major way because well you've said that you weren't on the land before well if you get to the world cup which well i'm rooting for you uh then there is a live audience uh and that is some kind of pressure i would say uh do you think that uh, that well pressure gets into your head uh, would that uh, degrade your performance or or do you feel fine with it um, it's of course a very difficult question because, uh, yeah, I've never been in that situation, so I don't know if I would be uh, super pressured and nervous, but just from knowing myself, I probably would be, yeah, I would probably be super shaky before, but as, as soon as I'm on the stage then I'm, and I'm in my, in my mood, I... Uh, should be good then. It's kind of like uh, when you back in school when I had to do like presentations in front of the class. Mm -hmm. It was kind of the same. Like before, I always was shaking with my sheets of paper and with my notes, and I was like, <laughs> 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 but uh, once I was once I was standing there, it always was like completely fine. And I think it would be kind of the same. But um, yeah, I think it would probably still be uh, better than, for example, like how it was in school because I know I wanna play on stage. I wanna have that feeling once. And although I would be nervous, I would probably still. It would be like a good nervousness, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. I want to tackle a different topic with you a little bit uh, that came up uh, in the uh, in the beginning of this week with the announcement of Twitch Rivals with 25,000 on the line. A small discussion you and Masa and Eirik had on Twitter with uh, <laughs> you and Masa being a little bit discouraged that uh, the streamer event uh, had a little bit more, <laughs> a lot more money <laughs> on the line. Uh, then you guys that commit a lot more time to the game, that you guys want to make it a career and all that. Uh, what can you tell me? What's the bottom line uh, of this of this issue? How does it look like from players' perspective? Let's set uh, let's set uh, the scene here. I mean, first of all, uh, before anyone gets me wrong, like uh, the mm -hmm. Twitch Rivals event is absolutely amazing. It's amazing oh, for the game. The organization was amazing. It was entertaining. So uh, really good performance by, or like really good organization by everyone who was involved by virtual and so on. So absolutely not uh, to downgrade that. Like mm -hmm. that's a really good thing. Of course. Um, it's just like what, as you said, uh, it's a price pool of $25,000 overall, which is, as far as I know, the second highest price pool Trackmania has ever seen. There was like one event in 2006, which had like more, but... Yeah, I don't know. And then the two Twitch Rivals events that took place were like the highest. So uh, in front of every single Trackmania World Cup, every TMGL, every other Trackmania LAN event at some point. And uh, like as you said, uh, it was a streamer event. It also was like, it was not like uh, people had to practice the maps before or so. So they basically just had that one evening, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just a little bit demotivating when you are a pro player yourself because uh, you know it from like... A, Basically, to put a normal Trackmania Grand League uh, season in a nutshell, uh, it takes like three to four months overall with practicing each week, some people each day. You have matches each week for multiple weeks. Uh, there's a lot of grinding involved. Mm -hmm. And in the ending, as pro players, we are playing for 
if we are unlucky, if we don't perform good, we uh, we get like nothing out of it, at least not from the prize pool. We of course have our uh, organizations and we all get a salary at this point, so that's good of course. But uh, still, we get like way less than like some people uh, get from that one event in the evening. And uh, of course, the Twitch Rivals, as I said, is like a really great event, but something just really has to happen with the prize pools in Trickmania. And uh, the only thing, I think I also said that on Twitter, uh, the only thing I can hope for is that um, the Twitch Rivals event motivated other uh, tournament organizers that the prize pool has to increase a little bit. I mean, uh, Eirik is doing a really good job at Malloy with that, with the 50k prize pool. That's a huge step up, which Trackmania really needs and also deserves, if you ask me. But, um, yeah, I mean, the major issue still is that Trackmania Grand League has no sponsor now, although it's existing for how many years? Three years? Four years? Four. And, I mean, we have average viewers of, like, 70,000 with all the streamers and so on involved, so... It's just, like, uh, from season to season without sponsor, it's getting more... Uh, it's getting worse and worse for the players, you know, uh, because we see a lot of people are watching it. 70,000 people, that's like so, so much. And we play like for um, a little bit, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, really, ha something really has to happen there. And if you see then, you as a pro player, like, for example, uh, if you take me in the Team GL spring season now, I also grinded a lot there. I played for maybe not as much as other uh, Team GL players. There probably were more no-lifers like Mada, for example. But I still spent a whole bunch of time over f uh, three months. And in the ending, I got out of it with, uh, I think I earned $450 overall with my free gold medals that I had. And uh, yeah, it's like, I'm not doing it. Uh, I'm not like playing Trackmania professionally for the money. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense at this point at all anyway. <laughs> I'm doing it because I really like playing professional. Uh, you cannot make a living out of it unless you win like everything always. So um but it would still be, of course, good to see it because, like, you also see it uh, when you take a look at the esports earnings website thing. Mm -hmm. uh, because you see, like, uh, I think Sardosh, for example, is now in the top 10 with his tw two Twitch rivals mm -hmm. uh, participations. And uh, it, it just shouldn't be like that. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I hope I everyone understands Massa's and my point there. Like, something just has to happen with the price pools of professional Trackmania tournaments. It's mm -hmm. just. It shouldn't be like that, that some streamers, uh, although they are, of course, uh, having a lot of, uh, you know, they are very popular. Sadosh has, like, thousands of followers. Of course, uh, he's very popular and is earning more, but it shouldn't be that they win more in Trackmania tournaments than the actual pros of the game, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. And I think most people uh, also have the same point of view there, I think. Yeah, and you've said something that I really wanted to, talk, to ask you about, because... TMG in itself has a smaller price pool, but a lot smaller price pool, but there is a requirement for organizations to pay you guys salary that has some sort of minimum. I don't know mm. if this minimum is high. I don't know if it's adequate. I don't know if it's high, <coughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know if it's high. I don't know if it's low, um, but do you feel like that kind of requirement makes up for the lower cash prices or is it just not enough? Um, I mean, to make, I, I guess the requirement is not pop, uh, public, if you say it like that. So yeah. I'm also not going to say it now. I guess I would get in trouble. I, I'm, not, I'm not asking for <laughs> that. I'm not asking for that. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I can tell you it's like the minimum is not enough to still live from it unless you are like living very minimalistic. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So uh, the it's, of course, a very good thing because uh, even if you perform bad, you you will get some sort of reward out of putting your time in. Which is of course a good thing and it also didn't exist until a few seasons ago i think i am not entirely sure about that either but uh, it's definitely a good thing that uh, nadeo um helped setting that up with the organizations but uh yeah it's still like it makes up for a little part but it doesn't make up for the whole part like for that mm -hmm. the requirement uh, would have to be still quite a bit higher to allow because I, in my opinion uh, it should be that the top 16 or like this that the 16 team gl players they should be able to do it full time that would be like the the goal to reach i would say not like full time in terms of twenty five thousand dollars salary a month or so so that mm -hmm. i can live in like uh, i don't know in the biggest house ever <laughs> but like that i can live like a normal uh, full-time life out of it like as if you had a normal other full-time job that would be like a really good goal to reach and uh yeah for that it's it's just it's not enough even mm -hmm. with the uh minimum salary so, so much i can say i think <laughs> mm -hmm. so what would you like to see happen towards that issue because there was that idea of crowdfunding and even trillax has offered ten thousand dollars i think for the next season of tmgl 
uh, is that the only thing that you see uh, that you see can happen, or what are the other options? I mean, uh, the crowdfunding is like the first option, as far as I know. Other games are also doing it. I think um, Dota somebody too. said Dota, for mm -hmm. yeah, Dota exactly uh, is doing that as well. And I mean, we all know how amazing the Trickmania community is. They are very yeah. generous. You also see it like with the with the streamers and so on. They're getting so many donations and subs, and the, the community is just very, very uh, amazing. And as I think I also said that on Twitter, um, if you would actually do a crowdfunding prize pool, it would probably be a lot coming towards there. You already said it, uh, Trilux um, offered $10,000 yeah. from his own already, which is absolutely amazing. And if you would make it completely open for public, I think um, a lot of people would contribute there. You also see it with other tournaments. For example, there is um, Flink is always doing the, the IC campaigns. I don't yeah. know if you... Mm -hmm. have, exactly. yeah. And th those are always also having like uh, more than $1,000 prize pool all uh, founded by the community. So um, that would be the one chance to definitely already, I think with that, we could at least bring the price pool to like 40, 50K, honestly, I think, uh, because with the help of Nadeo, like right now it's like 15K or so. I'm pretty sure we could at least reach like 30K with that. I mean, you already have the 10K by Trilux and I'm pretty sure we would uh, be able to do that. And I mean, the other obvious option would of course be to... Um, to finally get a sponsor into the league. Because as I said mm -hmm. earlier, uh, the viewership is amazingly high. And um, I honestly, uh, like, I don't know how, what's happening at Nadeo, like uh, why they don't, why we don't have a sponsor yet or so, but I honestly don't really understand why we don't have one yet, because I just can't imagine that no company is uh, willing to sponsor uh, sponsor Team GL because the viewership is amazing, the community mm -hmm. is amazing. Uh, Trackmania and in, in, uh, Trackmania itself is like a very viewer friendly game. It's not like uh, maybe Counter Strike, for example, which is like maybe a bit too too much for like some companies. Like literally any company you can imagine could advertise in Trackmania because it's like yeah. very kid friendly and so on. Then you also have like the huge uh, advertisement uh, signs in the arena. And there are like also many possibilities, so it, it should be very, very uh, um, sponsor friendly, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> I, there has to just be one. I, I, I really don't know where the problem is because I have no insight in Nadeo, but the only thing us players or like in general uh, the community can do is to hope that Nadeo mm -hmm. will finally uh, find one or manage to get one. But yeah, yeah I mean, if... we can just wait, <laughs> we can just wait and pray. <laughs> If anyone from Nadio is watching this, I am very much willing to talk about it with you guys. <laughs> Softy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, thank you for the interview. Uh, do you have any short message for your fans and the viewers? Um, actually, yes. <laughs> because uh, we spoke about it earlier, uh, that uh, the past matches or like past mm -hmm. tournaments with the final chance, with the set of T and so on, were of course a bit rough for me in terms of the result. But uh, one thing that is for sure is always like, that's also one thing, that's actually uh, one thing I I didn't mention before. You asked uh, whether uh, I'm always a bit demotivated afterwards. And indeed I am a little bit, but always when I take a look at my Discord, uh, where all my community is, they always say like, oh, Grenady, good job. We, I, we enjoyed watching. We still love you and so on. So that's absolutely amazing by my community. So thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's always nice to read. And um, yeah, that's... What I wanted to say. That's great, <laughs> amazing. And to all the viewers, all the links to Granada's socials will be in the description. Thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed, uh, I invite you to leave a like and subscribe for more interviews in the future. Thank you.